Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new here, it's great to have you. Uh, today I have with me the Roborock S7. This is the newest announced robot from Roborock and it was released on the market for sale uh, on March 24. Now, some of the biggest hype around this was around the mopping, new mopping feature. The Viber Rises Robo Rock calls it, has the ability for this mopping pad here to lift and lower itself. Also has the ability to vibrate here in the middle up to 3000 revolutions per minute to help scrub those stubborn stains off of your floor. And until the auto empty dustbin gets released a little bit later this year, this is the biggest news from Roborock right here. And so I am going to put this through a series of tests up against my S6 Max-V to see how well this new mop on the S7 works. Is it better than the S6 Max-V? Well, we'll find out. Stay tuned. We'll go ahead and get started. And for our first test, we're going to test its ability to detect carpet and lift this mop up off of the carpet. And we'll start off here with the S6 Max-V. Now I have uh, my runner rug here taped down on the floor just to make sure it doesn't move during these tests. But as you can see the S6 Max-V here is going to mop my dining room and it's also going to mop the rug. In fact, it's going to pay zero attention to the rug at all. It will mop right over it. And at the very end, when I placed my hand over the rug, I could definitely tell it was pretty wet. And so that is the result you will get if you have hardwood floors or any types of floors with a runner rug or with an area rug over them. Now here's where things change quite considerably with the new S7 and the technology built into it. When the S7 is mopping and it detects carpet of any sorts, what it's going to do, and you'll see that here in just a second, uh, it will start finding the parameter of the carpet. And it'll do this by doing this kind of wiggling motion back and forth. And what it's doing is it's identifying the edge of the carpet right here, and it's mapping it out. And as soon as it goes all the way around the perimeter of the rug, and it will, it does that first, it goes all the way around the perimeter, then it will start uh, in the very center vacuuming. So right now, as this thing is detecting this, it has already lifted up the mopping attachment. So it is not dragging the wet mop on this carpet. It has increased the vacuum suction because I have the carpet boost function turned on in the menu. So it is now effectively vacuuming this rug and not mopping it. So now that it's done the uh, perimeter sweep, you will see it now start to go and vacuum on the inside of the rug. And once it's done, this is a little small short rug just for demonstration purposes. Once it's done vacuuming inside the center of this rug, it will go back and start mopping on the outside of the rug. It will drop the mop attachment right back down and begin uh, going about its business mopping. Very cool, very innovative, and probably one of the best reasons to buy the S7. With the S7 and the new carpet detection sensor, which is different from the other models, some of you may be wondering how well it detects carpet. And I will say that every time I ran this through my test, it always accurately detected real carpet, whether it be a rug or carpet in your house, it did an excellent job detecting it. Now, there are times that it detected uh, carpet when there was no carpet on my tile. And it might be because of the color, coloration of my tile. And fortunately, Roborock has an answer for that. Take a look. So the dark shaded area here on the map that you see is where the S7 detects carpet. And sometimes it can detect carpet on floors where there is no carpet. So the solution for that is to go into the settings menu of the Roborock S7, go to carpet settings there. Uh, once this is loaded up, then you'll see there at the very bottom where it says ignore misidentified carpet. Go ahead and click that. And then you can select anywhere on the map where there's dark shaded area where there is misidentified carpet. Like right here in the middle of my kitchen, it uh, misidentified some carpet. It wasn't really carpet there. It happens from time to time. I can go in there and say delete this and it will never again when it crosses over this area identify this as carpet in future cleanups. Don't fret, however, you can go right back into here in case you put carpet there or a rug in the future and you can reverse out the settings so that it will then once again detect carpet in the future. So not all is lost 
if you uh, accidentally do that. So you can make this any size that you want and uh, put it anywhere you want so that it will ignore uh, carpet detection in that area. Very useful, very helpful feature. I'm glad that uh, Roborock included this. And for our next test, some of you may be wondering if this lift is good enough for medium or high pile carpet. Now I have some older carpet in my house and yes, I am going to be getting rid of that really soon. But for now, it is what you would consider probably medium-ish pile carpet. And uh, I tested it in my house to see how well this lift worked. Now in these tests, I ran a vacuum job in my hallway with a wet mop attached. And uh, not mopping, just a wet mop attached. And I could feel the carpet after the S6 Max V ran through and it was quite wet after dragging that wet mop across my carpets. Now with the S7, uh, again, I'm not mopping. I just have a wet mopping pad back there. And with the lifting mechanism, my carpet was a little bit damp, but nowhere near as wet as the S6 Max-V. So if you look under the carpet settings and look there under rise, it says that it is suitable for low pile carpets or mats. Uh, so right there, they're telling you that the rise mechanism is only good for low pile carpets or mats. At the very bottom, it says then select rise mode to clean low pile carpets and place no mop zones on medium and long pile carpets as indicated in app to protect them. So right there, Roborock suggesting the medium and long pile carpets need something else. And as you see there, the, uh, the lift isn't quite as high as some might like. I do wish that it did have the ability to lift itself up a little bit higher, but I do appreciate the fact that it can lift itself up. Next, we test the ability of the new vibrating mop. That's right, this is the supersonic vibrating mop right here that moves back and forth with a motor that is located underneath right here that vibrates the mopping pad up to 3,000 times a minute. We tested its ability to deep clean our floors and we put it up against the S6 Max-V once again. And we start things off here with the S6 Max-V and uh, what I have here on the floor is uh, dried up hot sauce. It's a really tough thing to remove for robot vacuums from the floors. Uh, and uh, it's what I've chosen here to use for this test. And so uh, I've got the water level in the Max-V at its highest setting. And uh, I have told it to do two passes over this zone area here uh, where it is trying to mop up the uh, dried up hot sauce on the floor and so as we take a look at it here you can see uh, what it does after uh, two passes and then we'll compare it to what the S7 does. And the S7 gets the same test with the same dried on hot sauce uh, with one difference uh, in the setting now for the app for the S7 you get a standard and a deep cleaning mode. The deep cleaning mode basically zigzags a little bit tighter together. So uh, because this is a tough stain, I went ahead and ran this test in deep cleaning mode. That's something that's not available for the other mopping robots from Roborock. So this is deep cleaning mode. And as you can see in the first pass, it pretty much so removes almost all traces of the hot sauce. Uh, I did allow it to do two passes over it just like I did with the S6 Max V and here with the S7 uh, as you can see when it does the second pass it actually does a different pattern it zigzags uh, the other way with the S7 when you do two passes it does both passes in the same direction this one does one horizontal and then the second pass it will do it vertically so a uh, nice option for mopping and vacuuming feature on the S7 here and uh, as you can see, it's done here with a second pass with the deep cleaning. And uh, it has done a really good job. I was very surprised. Obviously, this is with the new technology with the vibrating mop head. And uh, as you can see there, it has removed all of the hot sauce stain. And that's a pretty big drastic comparison to the S6 Max-V. And here is what the mopping pad of the S6 Max-V looks like after this test. As you can see, it picked up a decent amount on there. And the new and improved mopping pad for the S7, as you can see, it definitely picked up a lot more. And so for our final test with the S6 Max-V here, it has one feature the S7 does not. Let's take a look. 
And with the S6 Max-V, because we have the two front-facing cameras, if you are mopping and you have an accident or a shoe or anything in the middle of your floor, it will not mop over it. It will avoid it uh, by detection from those front cameras and not even touch it, as you can see here. That is still a benefit of the S6 Max-V over the new S7. Maybe they'll be coming out with a S7 Max-V in the future, but for now, if this is a problem in your house, you may want to stick with the S6 Max-V. As you can see here on the S7, what happens when I do a mopping job with obstacle in it like this, this is going to make a mess in your floor, in your house, anywhere you have stuff that is laying around. So while you do get the benefit of a lifting mop and a better mop on the S7, it's still not going to compete with the S6 Max-V in this area. Well, there you have it. We ran that new S7 from Roborock up against the S6 Max-V, one of the flagship robots from Roborock. And uh, you drop a comment below. Tell me what you think. Is this something that you would trade up from if you had an S6 Max-V? Uh, if you're interested in it, make sure that you drop a comment below. Ask me any questions that you like. I've had a little bit of experience with this thing now. And I can tell you that it is quite impressive with this deep cleaning ability. I also appreciate Roborox um, adding in the deep cleaning cycle and also changing up the pattern when you do multiple cleanings uh, back to back. Uh, with that said, stay tuned. We have uh, a new video coming out in the next couple of weeks where I will be testing the vacuuming ability of the Roborock S7. And I'll put that up against some of my other robot vacuums. And uh, we'll take a look and see if the uh, new brush roller that I've got on here, which is a uh, all rubber design brush roller with a floating brush deck, we'll see this up to the standards of the other Roborock models and how well it does. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you go ahead and hit subscribe button so you won't miss that and hit that bell notification. Please give me a like if you would, and uh, we'll talk to you here next time. Thanks, everyone. Take it easy. Bye-bye.